When it comes to competing with China, Congress just doesn't get it. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The House of Representatives just passed a bill with a $350 billion price tag that supposedly will make us more competitive with China. The Senate enacted a $250 billion piece of legislation last summer with the same purpose. Both chambers will now try to meld these bills into one. They shouldn't. Both versions deserve to be fed into a shredder. They'll waste vast amounts of resources. They'll inject inefficiencies and distortions into the marketplace with investment decisions made or directed by bureaucrats and politicians. The centerpiece of both bills is $50 billion plus dollars in handouts to the semiconductor industry. We all know about chip shortages and how so much of this production is now outside the U.S., but foundries take years to build. Financial markets will supply the needed capital. Contrary to myth, the U.S. isn't hopelessly behind the curve. The core of adding value here is chip design, and the U.S. leads the world with a 52% share. Also critical is chip-making equipment, and the U.S. has 50% of that. Our real vulnerability is that critically advanced chips, including for the military, are made in Taiwan. The Pentagon is already providing incentives to produce such chips in the U.S. The key company there, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, is building a $12 billion plant in Arizona. Intel has announced plans for investing over $40 billion for new facilities in Ohio, New Mexico, and Arizona. The real problem here is making sure Taiwan isn't conquered by Beijing. Doling out that $50 billion in subsidies will be riddled with politics. For example, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer wants a piece of that boodle to go for upstate New York. Moreover, the House provides some $45 billion to the Commerce Department for, quote, critical goods, end of quote. Definition unstated, but supposedly to strengthen supply chains. Billions are allocated to allegedly jumpstart promising ideas. No imagination needed to realize what a political port feeding frenzy that kind of cash will set off. The House package is loaded with provisions on issues such as climate change. $8 billion, for instance, is slated to help developing countries go for cleaner sources of energy. Another $8 billion goes to the UN Green Climate Fund. The State Department would be tasked with creating a new diplomatic climate corps in our foreign service to push alternative energy policies on other countries. The Senate version has plenty of doozies of its own, such as a new bureaucracy called the Office of Manufacturing and Industrial Innovation Policy. That is not to be confused with the new Federal Strategy and Coordinating Council on Manufacturing and Industrial Innovation. Instead of these semi-Soviet style versions of industrial policy, we should play to our free market strength of entrepreneurial innovation, which flourishes best with low taxes, a stable dollar, sensible regulations, and free trade. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.